So welcome to the first video for Intermediate Algebra. This is a review of section 3.1 to 3.4, so the PowerPoint that I'm using here is the same one I would use in a face-to-face -face class, but even in a class like that, I would not go through every single example that I put on here. So I'll let you sort of read some of the introductory stuff and some of the definitions, and I'll work through some problems, remind you of some things that are important as we start the course, but not all of the sections and videos will go this fast. The first four sections are really a review of things you've seen before, but are kind of nice to see once again. So what's over here is the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane is divided into four quadrants. You notice it starts here at quadrant one, and then we've got one, two, three, and four. This is your x-axis. Positive x-axis goes this way. Negative goes to the left. For the y-axis, positives go up on the top. Negatives go on the bottom. So everything that's on the x-y plane is labeled with an ordered pair. So if I had the ordered pair 3, negative 2, I would go 3 to the right, I would go 2 down, and I would plot a point over there at the ordered pair 3, negative 2. So in these coordinates, the x's come first, the y's come second. So Twitter's been in the news a lot recently. Let's go back to the old days. This is a graph that gives us the value of Twitter starting from back when it was founded in 2008. You imagine that one time there was no Twitter before 2008. Well, in 2008, the company just started. It was worth nothing. How do we read this graph? The x-axis down the bottom gives us the year. You notice there's a little break in the axis to tell us we're not starting at the year zero. We're starting actually here at 2007. Then from there, it goes up 2008 all the way to 2014. The y value gives us the value in billions, and the units up there tell us that these are not dollars. It wasn't worth $2. It was worth $2 billion. So the question says, estimate the value of Twitter in 2009 and in 2013. So in 2009, we're looking at this point over here, right? It's halfway between 2008 and 2010. We follow it across, and it looks like in 2009, it was worth about a billion dollars. So we make sure that we're accurate and we're not saying it was worth a dollar. It was worth a billion dollars. I have out 2013. Well, if this is 2012 and that's 2014, this halfway mark is 2013. So we follow it up to this dot up here and then across until we get to 14. So in 2013, it was worth $14 billion. And depending how things go, it might be worth that much again. <laughs> we'll have to find out. Current events. All right, this time this goes the other direction. This says, I have a table of values. I want you to make a scatter plot. So this is a scatter plot of the data for cost of a first class stamp going up from 1980 to 2020. Notice that the graph that I gave you is only a first quadrant graph. It's not the entire graph. We don't need the entire graph. We only have positive prices and positive years. So I'm going to put my year on this axis and the cost on this axis, and the cost will be in cents. All right, what are we going to do? We're not going to jam all five years right in the corner over here. We'll put a little note that we're going to make a little break. And then maybe this is 1980. I'm not going to be able to fit all the 19s here, so maybe this will be 1990. This will be 2000. Okay, so setting up a scale might take us a minute, but it'll help us to graph things more easily, right? So there's all the way up through 2020. As for the cost, maybe I'll go up by 10 cents. I got 10 cents here, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, and 60 cents. Okay, so I sort of get an idea of my scale based on what I'm given. I wouldn't make my years go out to like 2099 because it hasn't happened yet. On the other hand, I wouldn't start at 1900 because the graph starts, at, the table starts at 1980. Same thing for cents, right? I know I don't have to go up to $10 because the highest cost on this graph, 55 cents. All right, so let's plot. In 1980, it was worth 15 cents. So I come over to 1980, I come over to 15 cents, and I make a dot. Right, in 1990, it was worth 25 cents. So 25 cents in 1990 is right there. Okay, you notice that the x-axis is on 1990. The y-axis is at 25 cents. All right, in 2000, it was worth 33 cents. So 2000, there's 35 cents. So let's go a little bit below 35, and there's 33. 
In 2010, it was worth 44 cents. So there's 40 cents, 45 cents, a little bit below 45 cents, there's 44 cents. And then in 2020, it was 55 cents for a stamp, so there's my 55 cents. Okay, is it a perfect line? No, it's not a perfect line. The first two points don't fit perfectly on that line, but boy, it's pretty close. Look at those last three years. Every decade, the price of a stamp seems to go up by 11 cents, and eventually we'll find out that that's something called slope. Right, scatter plots aren't meant to connect every point going from one point to the other. It's designed to give us a trend. We plot the points individually, but we don't connect the dots unless somebody says, try to draw a line that best fits those dots. Then we might give it our best shot, but we're not going to connect them one by one. We're going to take maybe the starting and ending point and connect them that way. All right, there's a couple of different ways you can graph a linear equation, and actually one of the equations in here is not linear. Linear equation means you're graphing a line. You know it's a line if it's something like y equals x or y equals 2x plus 5. The degree is 1. So we should find a couple of ordered pairs. Technically, we only need 2 to graph a line. But if you want to make it accurate, graph 3 or 4 of them to make sure that your ruler is lined up correctly. You should be graphing these things with a ruler so you make a nice straight line and then put the arrows at the end. So we're going to find some ordered pairs, plot some points, and then draw out the line. So this one's y equals 2x plus 3. If I'm going to pick some ordered pair or pick some x values, I might pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. To find the y values, put the x values into the equation. So for the first one, I'll put in 2 times, I replace the x with a negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1. There's my first ordered pair. Right, what if I put in a negative 1? I'll get 2 times negative 1 plus 3. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So negative 1 matches up with 1. These things go together in groups. And right, if I put a 0 in here for x, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. I've got the ordered pair 0, 3. And now I start to realize that as the x's go up by 1, the y's go up by 2. So my next one would be 1, 5. My next one would be 2, 7. You don't have to put the parentheses around there. I'm just illustrating that what we've created are ordered pairs. All right, over to this graph here. Where is negative 2, negative 1? We always start at the origin. 2 to the left, 1 down. There's a point. 1 to the left, 1 up. There's another point. Zero three is on the axis. One five is up here. Two seven is over here. Now I'm not drawing this on a tablet where I can see where I'm graphing, so I can't use a ruler to graph these. You should. So I'm going to give it my best shot to draw a straight line. All right, so there's my rough graph of y equals two x plus three. Look at this one. This one's not a line. This one is a y equals x squared graph. So in this case, I'm not going to get something that I can draw straight with a ruler. I'm going to put in some values for x. Let's say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Here we got to remember that when we put that x value in there, y equals x squared. So negative 2 squared gives us a positive 4. Negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2 which is 4. If I put in a negative 1, I get negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 2. So there's five ordered pairs for me to graph. All right, so let's plot these points. Negative 2, 4 means we start at the origin. We go 2 over and 1, 2, 3, 4 up, and we make a point. And then we go 1 to the left and 1 up, and we make a point. 0, 0, we make a point, 1, 1, we make a point, and 2, this should be 2, 4, we make a point. 2 squared is 4. Right. And then we connect the dots as best we can. Down here, it's a U-shaped graph. Right. We have a name for it, we call it a parabola. So this is not a linear graph, but yet the idea of how to graph it is the same as if it were a line.
insert some x values, get out some y values. All right, we can also use the x and the y intercepts. The x intercept is the place where the graph crosses the x axis. So if we had a line that came down like this, here's the place where the graph crosses the x axis. The x value is something, the y value is zero. All right, if we want to find the place where the graph crosses the y axis, then same idea, except now we're talking about the point up here. All right, so the point up here, the x value is zero, the y value is something. And that's how we find those, those intercepts. The x intercept happens when the y value is zero. The y intercept up here happens when the x value is zero. So this question says find the x and the y intercept in a couple of additional ordered pairs and graph them. All right, so let's start with what happens when x is zero. When x is zero, we're left with negative 3y. Don't lose that negative sign. Negative 3y is negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 3. And we end up with y equals 4. So 0, 4 is my first intercept. All right, what happens when the y value is 0? When the y value is 0, I get 2x equals negative 12, or x equals negative 6. So negative 6, 0 is another one. Now, the other two points, we have to pick x values or we have to pick y values, either one. Um, pick ones that work out nicely. In other words, if I pick x equals 1, I'm going to end up with a number on the other side that's not divisible by 3. And so I'm going to end up with all kinds of fractions. Now, you can graph fractions. They're just very hard to graph on a graph that that's small. So maybe I'll pick something like x equals 3. If x equals 3... 2 times 3 is 6, so I get 6 minus 3y is negative 12. Subtract a 6 from both sides. Negative 3y is negative 18. And if I divide both sides by negative 3, I get y is 6. So when x is 3, y is 6. All right. Lack of creativity, I'll pick negative 3 for the other one. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, so negative 6 minus 3y is negative 12. This time I'll add 6 to both sides and get negative 3y is negative 6 divide by negative 3. All right, so don't lose those signs, especially signs like that. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2, positive 2. All right, let's plot these points. 0, 4 starts at the origin, goes up 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my 0, 4. Negative 6, 0 is to the left of the origin. 6 units to the left on the x-axis. Negative 3, 2 is up here. And 3, 6 is up there. Okay. If one of the points doesn't fall on the line, then probably you made a calculation mistake somewhere. Go back and check and see what might have happened. Okay. If it says you're graphing a line, then all the points should be on the line. Again, I don't have the ability to see where I'm graphing this. So it ends up actually a little bit under the points. Really, it should go through the points. All right, so I found the intercepts and two additional ordered pairs and graphed. All right, horizontal and vertical lines are sort of the special cases. A vertical line is like climbing a wall. Right? Vertical line looks like this. Every x coordinate is the same, so I don't know. Maybe this is the vertical line x equals negative 2. A horizontal line is like walking on a floor that's flat. Every y value is the same, so maybe this is y equals 1. Okay, every y value is the same, but the x's can change. And the other one, all the x values are the same, but the y's can change. So we're not going to do all these, but the first couple say simplify and graph. So the first one's x equals 3. x equals 3 is a vertical line. Every x value on that vertical line is 3. So here's x equals 3, vertical line. All right, look at letter D. Letter D doesn't look like an X equals or a Y equals, but it does ask us to solve it, so let's solve it. If I add a 3Y to both sides, I'll get my variables on one side, constants on the other. I get 6 equals 3Y. Divide both sides by 3, and Y is 2. So yeah, this is actually a horizontal line. How do I know it's horizontal? Because it's in the form of Y equals something. So if this is Y equals 2, I come up here to 2. And I graph y equals 2. Right, take a look at letter E. Letter E only has one variable. It's x's. So let's subtract a 5x from both sides. 
This gives me 4 equals, if I do 3 minus 5, I get negative 2x. Divide both sides by negative 2, and I get x equals negative 2. That's a negative number. So when I go to graph this thing, x equals negative 2 is going to be to the left of the origin. There. And then I label it. Otherwise, I don't know which one's the y-axis and which one's my line. There it is. There's x equals negative 2. All right, we'll tackle slope of a line in the next video.